Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Aditi Sanjay, and today I'm going to be talking to you about girls' education in India. I'd like to begin by telling you a little bit about India itself. And as you may know, it is a country of 1.2 billion people, it is the world's largest democracy, and it is also the world's 10th largest economy. Now you may be wondering, well, what's the issue here? Well, the way I see it, the issue is literacy rates, or to be more precise, the disparity between female and male literacy rates. As you can see, whilst the female literacy rate stands at 50.8%, the male literacy rate stands at 75.2%. This is a 25% difference between female and male literacy rates. It turns out that the issue gets a little more complicated. There is far more disparity between literacy rates in rural areas than in urban areas. The orange graph depicts literacy rates in Bihar, which is 88% rural. This, this Bihar has a 24.8% difference between female and male literacy rates. However, if we take a look at the blue graph, which depicts literacy rates in Goa, which is only 38% rural, we can see that there's only a 10.49% difference between literacy rates. These statistics tell us that there's almost double the disparity between literacy rates in rural areas than in urban areas. Now you may be asking yourself, why is there so much disparity in a country that has the world's 10th largest economy? Well, in my eyes, there are two major reasons that are sanitary conditions in schools and traditional beliefs. Addressing the issue of sanitary conditions, a census found that one-third of government schools surveyed didn't even give their students access to a usable toilet. Why would children even want to go to school if they don't have access to a bathroom? It is absurd. Addressing the issue of traditional beliefs, these beliefs include the assumption that women belong in the house, that their primary role is to be a wife and a mother, and thus they have no need for an education. Now, in India, as soon as the girl child is born, she's often seen as a burden. As soon as she's born, she is dependent on her parents. They have to find a dowry for her, they have to find her husband, and then as soon as she gets married, she's dependent on her husband for the rest of her life. It is a vicious cycle that these girls are simply stuck in. Obviously, literacy rates is a prevalent issue, and thus there have been things done to try and resolve the issue at hand. For example, the Indian government in 2009 ratified the Right of All Children to Free and Compulsory Education Act. And furthermore, the international community has taken initiatives as well. For example, the United Nations has collaborated with organizations such as Education for Girls, Girls Education Challenge, Save the Children, UN Women, and many, many more. And yet, even after all these efforts, the dropout rate among adolescent girls is still as high as 63.5%. This means that over half of India's girls don't even complete their education. Now this brings me to my solution to the, the issue at hand, a three-point plan. The first point states that the United Nations would partner with local NGOs in rural areas in order to implement an initiative including a counseling program extended to families. By extending a counseling program to families, we would ensure that the girls' families are well aware of the long-term advantages that their education would serve them. It would make sure that they will support their daughters should they choose to pursue a higher education. My second point addresses the issue of sanitary conditions in the schools. It states that the aforementioned initiative would partner with the World Health Organization in order to implement a supervision program of the conditions in these schools. Now the WHO would provide any resources that these schools would need in order to get these conditions up to scratch. And then furthermore, they would then um, conduct inspections at random intervals to make sure that these conditions are being maintained and that they're appropriate for these girls and boys to be going to school. Now the third point is that the aforementioned initiative would implement a program informing the rural girls themselves of the long-term long-term advantages of completing their education. We can implement as many initiatives as we want, however, if the girls themselves aren't motivated to complete their education, there is no point. They need to be able to fight. They need to want to fight for their right to education, and that is what this plan does. 
You may have noticed that my plan utilizes the United Nations rather than the Indian government. And you may be asking, why is this? Well, there are two reasons that I made that decision. Firstly, the government's initiatives in the past have been on a large scale, and they've had little progress, as we can see, with the high dropout rate. And furthermore, the Indian government's priority at the moment is the economy, which is understandable. However, it does not help to resolve the issue of disparity in literacy rates, which is why I went with the United Nations as the organization to drive this project forward. Now you may be asking yourselves, why do we need to take action? Well, ladies and gentlemen, education is a basic human right as outlined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This means that girls and boys, women and men alike, should have the same access to education. However, it is evident that in our world today, that is not the case, and which is why we need to take action to change this. Mahatma Gandhi once said, we must be the change we wish to see in this world. Ladies and gentlemen, we must be the change in these girls' lives, a change that they need, a change that will allow them to dream and to achieve like you and I are able to. And this change all begins with education. Thank you.